Good evening. Hello, everybody on OPN. Welcome to the A to Z call-in show. Um, we have one topic tonight, and then we're going to do an open mic. So um, hopefully that'll be enjoyable, and hopefully some people will give us a call in. Okay, that sounds great. Are you going to go ahead and start with our first topic tonight? Yeah, I am. Um, I had actually 7:59, so I wasn't quite quite prepared, but I, I can. Roll I am with at 8:01. So. Yeah. I don't okay. know what's well. going on with your your computer clock. <laughs> well, we're so far. It's not my computer clock. It's oh. my phone clock, and we're so far up in the mountains that time does get here a little bit later. Um, and I see. We have 12 viewers, so I was wondering if we should kill some time and give the room Did time to be filled. Did anybody I tweeted and tweeted and tweeted and, you tweeted know, all that tweeted? stuff. Yeah. Do so, uh, everybody's Do probably, it is ironic because I didn't realize it, but um, time is late. <laughs> I uh, didn't realize that Detroit was in the World Series, and tonight is the first World Series game. So I suspect uh, everybody's watching the best ball because the best of ball have been bad about it. Go to me. Detroit's um, in the World Series. Yes, they are wow, in the World I didn't Series, know that. Uh, uh, playing against uh, the Giants. Gi I just only know this from Twitter, right? Playing against. <laughs> Punk Boy's home team, the San Francisco Giants. Yeah, I only knew the Giants were in it because of Punk Boy and Oak for Show. <laughs> well, let me tell you, I I personally did go to one baseball game in the old Candlestick Park out on Hunters Point in San Francisco, and this was back in the early 80s. And uh, baseball in October in San Francisco is probably going to be as cold or colder than Detroit so um, it's wow. it's going to be it's going to be a World Series that is um, going to require long underwear <laughs> all the way around <laughs> well, I think. it's been so warm here this week but next week it's like we're going to have like the highs in the 40s but uh -huh. it's in the 70s it was like 78 today and by yeah. the weekend it's going to be in the 50s Huh. I'm like, ugh, well, <laughs> I'm it, not it ready the, for it yet. Yeah, it was in the 80s here today, but, you know, we're not about, you know, we're not about sports, and we're not about weather. We're about the news that nobody gets anywhere else. So I think I'll go ahead and start in on uh, the Detroit story, and um, everybody can see the number there to call. So... Um, we're going to be um, having open mic call in shortly, so we've kind of put off this Detroit story just because of time, and I want to get in it. So everybody uh, may or may not know, I went up to Detroit for a few days a couple of weeks ago, and it was my first time up there, and it was a really interesting experience. Um, I have never been to a city that has um, you know they would say Detroit is a dying city I don't know that I'd go that far but it does have serious issues I've been all over the world and I've seen cities that were in more desperate conditions but I've never seen a city that has been you know e evacuated um, because of the economy uh, we went through there and um, we were up there Hello. and visit with some artists and do a few interviews and we did all that but we did of course go around and tour and if you you look here you can see some of the snapshots of the city um, these row houses there and I'm guessing because the screen froze where are we see are you still there or am I talking to myself yeah I'm still here okay why did are we were you still live okay the screen's moving fine for me i think yeah okay um and actually clearly i had i had been in pittsburgh around that time and i would say in comparison detroit was was much much worse 
So you can see this. Detroit's this particular been declining for quite some time, and then when the economic crash happened, it was just like the nail that sealed the right. coffin. Um, the waterfront scene that's on the screen now is kind of illustrative of one side of it. Um, and then you can see these other images coming up. Um, I've never seen so many empty buildings, so many closed buildings. Uh, the thing that was really astonishing to me is as you drove through what used to be neighborhoods, there's block after block after block after block of completely empty, gone. There's not a structure there. It's just gone and when you see it from the air you see these grids that look like farmland that was actually the heart of the downtown housing and we're we're not talking 10 blocks we're not talking 20 blocks we're talking hundreds of blocks um, but then there'll be a spot where there's these nice houses like this where people have restored them um, my understanding Look at the is architecture on those houses aren't they beautiful they like turn oh, yeah. of the century houses aren't they Looks yeah like yeah um Tarp, I took a few of them. I, most of them, though, are like archive photographs um, that were illustrating better than I did. Um, but the population of the city of Detroit has decreased by half. Um, it used to be a thriving city of over 2 million. Now there's around 800 to 900,000 people in there. The uh, unemployment rate is at about 25 percent. Um, there is a lot of desperation there, but all that being said, I saw some really positive things. Um, it is absolutely a frontier. I, I didn't feel like it was unsafe at all, and you know, we were out day and night, and we went almost everywhere. I found people to be really friendly and outgoing, and um, when you ask them questions, um, they were excited to talk, and, and the people that we talked to, nobody said anything about bad about their city. They said things bad about the city government. They said things bad about the infrastructure, the lack of transportation. They, they, they spoke to all the problems, but as a city, people said, we love our city. We love our city. Uh, the people I stayed with were actually Detroit natives, so have been there what? through this whole evolution. It is. It's truly like an iconic city, uh, you know, the best of what America had to offer as far as, you know, the Industrial Revolution. It was um, huge, uh, you know, yeah. the manufacturing boom. The, the <clears throat> scope and scale of what happened in that city as far, you know, in its heyday was astonishing. The... Um, Detroit Institute of Arts, which is one of the places we went and saw and had some meetings at, you know, a world-class art museum in Detroit of all places, who knew? Uh, I had a chance to see the Diego Rivera murals there and actually got an hour-long um, discussion because the person that we were staying with is one of the two national authorities on that piece of work, so they uh, she deciphered it for us and took us all the way around. So there's a great history of labor and productivity and resistance to the status quo and you know strong union presence there, all of which is you know kind of dissolved under the on onslaught of the city government. The um, state of Michigan doesn't do much better. So these people are literally in Detroit. Um, trying I think the unemployment rates around 25 percent clearly if I understood right but the people that are there are trying to make something out of it it's it's pretty it would go to a lot of the uh, urban homesteaders for lack of a, a better word when you go in these neighborhoods there'll be a cluster of three or four or five homes you know half half of one side of a block and they will have bought them and it's not these homes we're looking at now these are these are the houses that are bought for a hundred or two hundred or three hundred dollars at auction and people move into them they repair them they make them livable they have really huge backyard gardens growing food they have uh, animals mostly chickens 
probably some rabbits. I didn't see any goats or cows there, but you could see this garden. This is not unusual. Community gardens all over um, Detroit, not only out of necessity to help feed their population, but out of a desire. The big question amongst everybody I met was, can a city be revived? And the overarching response was, we, we think it can, but we have to do it ourselves, and it can never be like it was, want it like it was, um, because it was so dependent on manufacturing and the powers that be. Um, so there's a there's an undercurrent of optimism in all that desperation, and it was very inspiring. Um, cash is hard to come by. Um, not many, I mean, with 25% unemployment, there's a lot of people working peace jobs and stuff like that, um, just trying to make ends meet. But they're, you know, living on shoestrings, and they're making a go of it. We met Sarah. We're having a little trouble with the, your Google Voice. People who, who had this really, um, really interesting project going on that they call the powerhouse and uh, it was a couple that bought a house in one of the deteriorated neighborhoods they took it totally off the grid it's got wind generator solar um, they're working on a catchment water system they have, they're using it as a community model and it's in a it's in a rugged area and in the first couple of years they had problems you mean people would break into the house and you know steal stuff and all that but these folks toughed it out and they actually bought another house around the neighborhood that they live in and they have a third place down the street that they're re renovating to use as a community education center and the idea is that the original house the powerhouse is going to be an educational center for urban homesteading so it's slow and steady work, but I think they just won a prize um, at a at a design and arts festival somewhere, a um, hundred and fifty thousand dollar grant. So so now they have some funding that they can make some stuff happen. But you know they're setting an example. So. I think and these buildings here where we see we went to these buildings and some of these buildings are being reclaimed as artist spaces um, it, and like I said it's pretty rugged I honestly I can't imagine what it must be like in the winter I just I can't um, yeah exactly clearly starting from scratch with ideas that work for people not for individuals and I would say because of the um, the challenges there there is a lot of consideration for community. Um, people recognize that they need each other. People recognize that two families can actually, working together, can accomplish more than two separate families focusing on their individuality. So there's a lot of good exercises there of community organizing, community building, um, another interesting thing there is um, we actually drove through Mitt Romney's neighborhood I mean his real neighborhood where his house is in Bloomfield Hills which is 20 minutes from the edge of Detroit so it was startling to see the difference in people who are living on the edge of desperation contrasted with the seemingly endless wealth 20 minutes away from there um, it drove home the point that the, the problem here is that there's not it's not that there's not enough money it's not that there's not enough resources it's not that there's not enough stuff to go around it's not that the people need help um, the problem is completely one of distribution and 
you could see it so clearly you could almost draw a dotted line between the haves and the have-nots. And I was wondering as well, we drove down... Well, and I down, think when I was there in 2002, you could see a difference then. Without it, It's much more stark now. But I remember we drove through down by the river um, mm -hmm. and you know you could tell the poor neighborhoods and then just a few minutes outside it was you know nice suburbia so yeah it's a it's a complicated existence and and the, the people in the city proper um, they I have to give them credit there's what I would say an appropriate amount of resentment but they're not getting bogged down in it um, you, you know they're they're focusing on the task at hand which very often is being able to feed themselves and the kids how to heat the house <coughs> you know how to eke out a living it's a very very um, new millennium frontier city where you can see the problems of previous history and how people are trying to work within them or to transcend them so that was my experience with Detroit. Uh, all in all, I left there feeling optimistic about the work that people were doing. I also have mad respect for them because it is an incredible struggle that they are engaged in in a daily basis. Um, um, so I wanted to ask you a question. Did you have any conversations about uh, the fact that when it began to decline, was there any uh, kind of push to revitalize the city before it got this bad? I mean, was well, there any infrastructure building going on? What, what apparently happened? the the deterioration from people who have been there for a while actually said started in the um, the early '60s, like '62, '63, '64 that a lot of issues of course were um, racial slash civil rights issues but it even then un unknown to people that the auto manufacturing um, situation was starting to go you know kind of crooked mm -hmm. um, there were problems coming in so um, I have a call coming in. This might be somebody that wants to talk about Detroit, so we'll answer it. Good deal. Call from John Zangus, occupied. To accept, press one. To send a voice. Good evening, John. Hey, You're John. On. How are you? Hey, Mark. How are you? I'm doing great. We're good. We're good. Are you calling to chime in on Detroit? No, actually, I I don't want to change the topic too by too much. Although Detroit is very is very topical, um, I, I guess my concerns are that, that you know, hearing everything that's going on in the news lately, is that uh, regarding the debates, um, people are focusing too much on posture and not on content. Um, but uh, I agree with that a hundred percent. Do you want to switch? Yeah, I think that if you're worried about who speaks the best and who's got the best angle, you really need to look on performance and, and base, if you're going to vote, base your vote off of who is the, the, the person that's going to deliver the goods that you want, not who's going to be the best debater or the most skilled speaker. I agree 100%. So what... What's the tone like in uh, in Washington these days? Is it sort of like what you see on the news? Is it get uh oh some sense of reason? Okay, you're back. Um, it, the, during an election year, things are kind of hectic around here. Uh, as you know, a lot of the lot of the legislatures out they're out doing their thing in their their home state, so business. You know, the business of Washington is, is primarily government and the industrial complex, the military industrial complex, um, and of course lobbying. So a lot of the corporate folks are, are focusing on the elections. A lot of the legislatures out of the city 
canvassing and you know doing their thing for their respective districts. So the energy here kind of slows down, but just right around election, it really picks up. Uh, the news services get busy, people get real excited, and you know the last election when Obama won, uh, the the city really turned into a sea of people celebrating. I've never seen anything like that ever before. So it's, it's hard to say what's going to happen this time, you know, whoever gets elected. It seems to be close to the polls, but it's, it's hard to tell what's going to happen this time. I don't know if people are going to be as excited about the elections this time as they were last time. Well, I I have I wrote a lot on Twitter the other day, uh, or maybe it was this yesterday, that I felt like the elections are going to happen, and um, whatever happens, the people are going to lose, and that we need to mobilize, and we need to start right now to to try to turn this thing around. Um, I don't think there's any good outcome to be had out of this particular election. That's a great quote. You know, that, that, that is such a good point because, you know, I listen to the debate, the contents of the debate, and the, the, the concern I have is that the real issues that are impacting us are not really being discussed. You know, the global warming issue, the carbon dioxide output into the atmosphere. And presently, we're experiencing one of the warmest Octobers ever here in Washington. I can't quantify that in a scientific terms other than to say, in all the years I've lived in this area, this is the warmest October. Right. Um, we, we haven't, we've had just a few days down the 50s, and we've maintained 60s and 70s. Um, global warming is definitely a, a huge factor in, in our future. It's going to have a great impact on the weather, the climate, on our ability to produce food anywhere. And, and even a few inches rise in the ocean means huge losses of land. Um, it's, it's almost too late to start raining the energy companies in regarding the output of the, uh, of the CO2. But it's definitely a scientific fact. There's no longer an argument of whether it's happening. It is happening. Those types of issues are not being really discussed in the debate and they so dramatically impact us. We're having a discussion uh, right now in front of the Veterans Administration, as you know, we're having a, an indefinite vigil regarding our veterans who are coming back from the wars. And I just found out that the VA is, for every third person that's walking into the VA is getting treated for PTSD. We've had our veterans have been uh, deployed to wars for the last 10 to 12 years We've been involved in the Middle East conflict with Iraq for 20 years. Um, the Afghanistan war has lasted longer than any war in this history, any direct action war. And we've deployed our veterans two, three, four, even five times on their first enlistment. And that's absolutely beyond any reasonable request for a human being to be sent to a war that many times and then come back and, and be asked to normally assimilate back into society. So we have this huge influx of veterans coming back who are suffering from PTSD. And Occupy DC is maintaining a vigil out in front of the Veterans Administration and we have been holding it now for about 15, uh, correction, about 20 days now. So follow us in the news on that. That's a really big thing. Uh, treating our people uh, with TLC who come back from wars. Um, a very good point, and I want to um, just give uh, a plug in. If um, people haven't checked out CoolRevolution.net lately, um, there's a really good article in there that um, that John wrote and, and uh, you know, worked with him on and put it up on the artwork that was uh, done for the. Is it the? Has it been rolled out already, John? I forget. I'm sorry. The one, uh, no, the, the, that, that's for the that 26. is the homeless initiative. As you know, um, the homeless. You know, we, we. You know, Mark, we work on a lot of different issues here because we're we're really concerned about the direction our society is going in, and regardless of whether you are Republican or Democrat or Independent or Socialist or whatever your political conviction is, 
issues we're working on impact everybody equally. And a homeless initiative here is, is another factor that we're working on. And we're going to have a protest on Friday at 12 noon at Farragut Square. We're going to march to Freedom Plaza. And one of the banners that Ray Boyd, who is our, our, one of the artists of Occupy, when he has worked on for over 20 hours, he worked on it over two days. It's, it's illustrated. I took photographs of it and wrote an article on it in CitizenRevolution.net, which is a really cool blog. Uh, the lady who runs that blog takes issues that are going on in our area and across the country and the world, and, the world, and she posts information relative to concerns that people have. It's some good reading, too. She's a Yeah, I really appreciate that. Um, well, I, I would love for everybody to read that article and look at this banner. It's absolutely beautiful. And and John, I'm going to go ahead and, and toss out there our our idea of um, the vet show just so we can get some early discussion about it, even though we haven't gotten it planned really well yet. Um, so yeah, yeah. Um, John Zangus and organizer X and Corey and I are working on putting together a show with some of the vets that um, John is uh, working with there in uh, DC and we plan to do that on Thanksgiving week we may do it the Sunday before Thanksgiving or the Monday before Thanksgiving but we're going to do a panel discussion with some of the vets and get really tuned in to some of the veterans issues and challenges that they have as John said this vigil they're keeping is really significant it's one of the dirty little secrets of the United States how we're treating the the vets both not only of the current returning vets but historically from all the wars um, so I've had the chance to meet some of these guys um, in Charlotte fantastic people with poignant stories so we're looking forward on on having all you guys on and we'll we'll have to work out the details on that but that's something you guys can look forward to on OPN I think and and uh, let me just say Mike I really appreciate that on behalf of veteran as a veteran and on behalf of a lot of veterans you know a veteran will give you his last cigarette uh, if he has it uh, to give um, they're, they've got open hearts they've really dedicated their life to something and they paid a huge price going to combat, uh, fighting a war, and coming back. It changes a person, and they're not going to sit out there and, and complain and, and make a lot of noise. In fact, a lot of veterans are out on the street, and I can see them. They have a different demeanor, and they have a different mental makeup after going through such a difficult experience. They're not the same people. Their minds have changed. Their bodies have suffered wounds in some cases. But uh, it's, it's a fact the Center for Disease Control, the U.S. Census, has recorded that veterans kill themselves 18 times a day. That's one every 80 minutes. Um, and that's, that's, a, that's a horrible statistic that needs to be reined in. And one of the ways that can be reined in is by doing an effective outreach into the streets where veterans are. The veterans who need the help are often not going to ask for it because they're not used to asking for help. They're not used to asking... Uh, are admitting that, that there's a problem, even though they take it to their grave with them, and then everyone realizes, oh my God, too late. That's just one of the issues. Um, but yes, we would definitely like to do this show. We have a great set of individuals who have lots of experience, all the way from the veteran, the Vietnam era war time up to the Gulf and Afghanistan. And we're thinking if we can do the logistics, possibly airing that show by the wall, by the Vietnam uh, wall memorial, or, or perhaps if we can get the sound right, we can get the, the connection, maybe by the memorial, the Lincoln Memorial. It'd be right there near where the wall is. Right, so right. Let's talk to organizer X and see if we can do that. Yeah, well, we're, we're all working on it behind the scenes, and we'll be in touch soon with a couple of different ideas, and we have time to um, you know, figure it out, but we want to make it a good show. And I just want to go ahead and throw this out to the, the listeners and the viewers that um, my plan, uh, and Zena and I have talked about this, 
is that I think you know we would love to have the vets on to speak to us but I would also love it if OPN could just as a, a gesture of appreciation if we could figure out how to provide some food and hot drinks and stuff in return just as so put that in the back of your heads and let's see if we can't come up with an idea on how to effectively do that and John we'll be talking to you more about that soon I really appreciate it. The vets out in front of the VA, that's the headquarters building at 810 Vermont Street. They appreciate it, too. They're out there 24-7, and uh, the support that you give could be locally in the community as well uh, for veterans who are volunteering at veterans' centers. So thank you so much, Mark, for taking my call, as always. I look forward to working with you on this project. Okay, well, take care. Keep up the good works, and, and thank you for everything you guys are doing there. We appreciate it. Service to the country. Have a good night. Thank you, John. Bye-bye. That was our friend John Zangus from Occupy D.C., and uh, I have a lot of respect for him. He is on the ground doing the work every day, um, like so many people, but you know if you notice he he always focuses the attention on the issue or on the other people and I think that's such a great example so we have an open line now uh, Robert if you're listening and you want to call in and tell us about the Laporte show or anybody else that wants to call in and Zena should talk some now since I've been dominating the conversation <laughs> I don't know now um, so there was something that I was tr I was going to bring up, and now it's lost my mind because I'm thinking about the vets. So, um, give are you going to tell everybody about your leaf blower? What definitely was, not. What? I have <laughs> a call coming in. You're what? saved by the bell. I wasn't going to talk about the leaf blower. <laughs> Robert. Good evening, Robert. This is our forum live on OPN. Thank you for calling. Hi, how are you tonight, Art? We're, we're doing well, we're doing well. Um, I, I asked uh, Robert to call in and tell us a little bit about the Monday show. We, we promoted some, but I didn't have a chance to watch it because it was during my work day. So tell us, tell us what you did and um, give us the deets on where we can see the archive, if any. But I would love to hear the show about your show, what you did. Well, actually, um, you know, I didn't try to get a hold of of, of of your some of your team. I actually sent you an email. Uh, actually, anyway, we had um, uh, the tech king Leo Laporte uh, live um, on on set. Well, I'm used to saying on set, but I, we had him on our show, and uh, we did talk a lot about technology. But uh, the baseline message I think that we're really getting into was social media and how to make it work uh, to our benefit. Um, uh, Leo Laporte, he, he was on uh, uh, Tech TV many years ago on Screen Favors, and um, he is um, nationally syndicated um, on the Premier Radio Network. Are you familiar with him? Um, no, but I'm actually Googling him as we speak, so just keep on telling us. We'll get the deets oh. and post them up. <laughs> All right. He, uh, trust me, he is a class act, and he was one of the best gifts, uh, 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 well, I guess I'm calling it a gift, one of the best gifts that I've ever been given, really, um, was that interview with him. Um, he's one tough man to, uh, to get an interview with, but he didn't give it to us. Um, but uh, his actual site is uh, Twit TV, or Twit, T-W-I-T dot TV. Um, uh, that's, his, that's his deal. But it's technology-based. Um, and as we were sitting Monday talking, I had him on for just over an hour. And we were talking about social media and how to get social media to work um, to our advantage. He did bring up the Occupy Wall Street movement. Um, and we were talking again about technology. Um, the, the mainstay, portable things that people use um, and or can use. Um, when they're out on the street corner doing uh, a reporting or citizens journalism, uh, versus those that um, that have media outlets uh, through their home offices or or uh, studios, 
um, and how that, that the attitude of America when it comes to social networking is changing. This is very uh, bizarre, but it's changing from mainstream media television more so into, um, into Internet-type television like your show and like mine. Well, that's that's really interesting, and it brings up a point. And you know, I would love for you to weigh in on this. About um, we had a little bit of it on our panel um, about the necessity as we're getting more and more exposure to be uh, clear and accurate and fact-based, so we don't go down the path that mainstream media has done. Exactly. Um, um, now, hold on just a second here um, so I can copy this link. I'm going to actually post a link in, um, over on the chat, okay. in your chat here. Yeah. And what this link is, I'm not going to, uh, uh, I'll just tell everybody what it is, but that's the link to the actual uh, footage, um, uh, to the show. Um, but Leo, as he was talking, he was talking about, uh, about buying a new TV, right, that has uh, the apps on it. Uh, for internet and for different little things on it, and and he said he goes you know he goes I'll tell you there is more people and he looks for the next generation of internet users um, and broadcasters um, to to more or less take the place of mainstream media right um, that, that we buy on television now mm -hmm. um, because more and more people are turning to uh, to social networking sites. Uh, for the news, for the information, for their entertainment, um, for uh, for whatever the cause is that they're looking for, um, versus going through uh, uh, through their TV channels. Well, and I think that's you know, I mean that works to our favor, but then it becomes incumbent on us to provide you know quality material. Well, I don't think that you've ever had a problem. Um, with, with creating quality material. Does everybody in the, in the chat agree? Um, I don't think that anyone has had a problem with that. Um, when you guys are live, trust me, I enjoy seeing you guys live. I totally do. Um, and, and, you know, I've been in, in media for many, many years, Art. Um, you know, professional media, that's what I've been doing now as an independent uh, media uh, uh, person here uh, online. Um, but you know what? I would not go back for the life of me. Mm -hmm. I just wouldn't. Um, there is too much that that mainstream media is missing out. When it comes to the Occupy movement, it seems like the only thing that they want to address is the bad and not the good of it. Um, a, a good, really good example, Bank of America today, um, they were actually a, a federal lawsuit against them for $1 billion was filed against them uh, for, uh, for, uh, for fraudulently um, giving people loans uh, that are subprime mortgages, um, you know, back in 2008 and 2009. Well, and and deliberately and knowingly continued it after the countrywide purchase. That is, uh, that's absolutely correct. And they made the news now. Um, you know, today it was on the news, and I talked about it on my news show. Um, and and I was like, you know what? Wait a second. Um, this is exactly like. Like somebody knocked on somebody's head. This is exactly what the Occupy movement has been saying to begin with: is that the, the greed on Wall Street, the the collapse of the economy due to the banking industry, they get bailed out, we don't, and now here uh, B of A um, is having to pay back one billion dollars. Go figure, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, and so they're. So being the suit was filed for a billion dollar settlement, and you watch somehow they'll come out of it, you know, paying a quarter billion or something like that, and they'll still have ended up making jillions and jillions of dollars. And this afternoon, driving over, I had the radio on, and uh, you know, because the only station we can get here is the Charlotte NPR station, which they play marketplace, you know, for all the bankers in Charlotte. And the fellow at the end of the show said, "Which is which is the most disastrous and most serious uh, merger that's happened in our generation? Was it Time AOL or was it B of A and Countrywide?" And I said, "That's a that's a no-brainer question. Of course, it was B A Countrywide because that ruined people's lives. Time and AOL was just entertainment, so who cares, right? <laughs> but but it didn't just the, ruin people's lives; it sucked the wealth, all of most of the middle class wealth to the top. 
Sorry. Yeah, yeah. It it was no. It's that's it just it just it just broke the back of millions of people, the BOA and and countrywide thing. And and there's still there can be no degree of accountability that is too large for that that travesty. Well, I I want to I'll say this uh, to clear uh, to clear at least some sort of fog. Um, and and some people will know uh, what I'm talking about um, because. And, and people did not really get, get a chance, Art, to hear exactly what I was saying. Um, as far as uh, as far as my media, my my new show that I do, um, and now you know, I want everybody really to to, to listen uh, to the verbiage. Um, we as a media group, um, that with what I do with my show, um, yeah, we're going in a podcast. We're doing a lot of different things, but um, my 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 channel, my my media. We have separated ourselves um, from the Occupy Wall Street group. However, and this is this is the verbiage. However, me as a person, I do of course support it. But if if, if the media group, if, if what I do, my, my my show, if we were solely occupied, then here comes another group. Then they're going to say, "Wait a second, now you're biased." And I don't want to get into being biased. I as a person do. But when I look at the news today. When I looked at, at what B of A was up against, when I looked at um, th- this lawsuit by the federal government against them um, for this, this sham, really, uh, you know, I thought to myself, I said, you know, and I even said it on the air, I said, you know what, the Occupy Wall Street group, they were the first ones who said, look, um, hey, this is wrong. This is wrong. Um, and they brought it up to, to America's attention but what is so aggravating, Art, is that now people are finally listening to the original message of the Occupy Group. Right, right. Well, you know, we just need to keep pushing that message and drive it home. Um, can you put your, your link to your channel up in the chat, please, so everybody can get it and we can add it to our pad? Yep, it's, uh, it's easy. It's robertchristianshow.com. And then you just click on the, the live tab up there, and that's where you can find it. I've got the, the stream embedded. I've got the chat embedded. I've been doing a lot of embedding, um, but that's a, a much easier place, um, a, a location, at least that way it's not like uh, 10 miles long of the URL. Right, right. That's good. Um, but we are, of course, we, we are on Facebook, Robert Christian Show on Facebook. I, we changed the name of it uh, from News Talk uh, to Robert Christian Show, and we did that. Because I was streamlining everything, um, that uh, our domain was was up, so our nearing uh, being up, so we, we ended up changing that. We changed the name of the stream, um, but we haven't changed necessarily the content. Um, but yes, at times we do still air some things of the Occupy movement, and I totally listen to the, uh, to your talk shows here um, uh, beyond measure. I really do. Well, thank you. Um, thank you for the compliments. Uh, and you know, clearly, I'm not, I'm, get all the credit. <laughs> I, you know, I tell you, um, I, you know, I'm not against the Occupy movement or the people within. I think they're great. Some of the most loving and compassionate people. Um, but like I said, you know, as far as as far as my my show, we we separated ourselves deliberately because otherwise we would become so biased. Um, Later down the road, if there's another group or another thing coming along, um, then then hey, they'll, they'll say, "Oh, now you're biased," and shake their little wicked little witch finger at me. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> but I, I, as a person, um, uh, my administrator, as a person, my partner, as a person, um, yeah, we support it absolutely. Um, but I think more so than that, I, I support your show and what you do, um, Art, because hey, you know, you're making you're making some headlines around um, live stream. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just it's any any time now the scandals will start happening. So thank you for your call, buddy, and uh, keep up the good work. And is the uh, Laporte show in your archives? Um, you know what? Let me actually see. Um, it is actually in the archives. Um, it was October the tw- um, if you ever write it down, um, it was October the twenty second of uh, twelve. Um, and the, the entire show is two hours and 20 minutes long. Um, but um, I did post up a, um, where did it go? Um, well, shoot, the, the, the chat is running too, uh, too fast. Um, <laughs> <but> <laughs> you guys are, you guys are, are, are bad. 
Okay, so there is the link. There you go again. That is the link um, for the Leo Laporte show that is on YouTube. The whole show is on there. Okay, well, um, great. Thank you very much. And, oh, thank you very much, um, Art, and everybody else, Cleary, and I think that's the, how you say your name, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, then everybody else, everybody's probably going to start laughing. Hey, I'm, I'm out of here. I'm bad with names tonight. <laughs> but good to talk to you again. Have a good night. Good night. You too. Bye. Bye. So, Z, did you think of what you were trying to say? <laughs> oh, I was just going to mention that I've been seeing around everywhere the strikes on Walmart, and uh -huh. they're calling for campaigns to boycott Walmart on Black Friday, and there's actually a workers boycott on I can Black get behind Friday. the Black Friday bo boycott. Yes, <laughs> I agree. And actually, Clearly was calling for boycott, so I think that's a good one. The Walmart boycott would be good, right? It looks like it might be, good, be right? taking off some steam. So with the, with the strike, the Walmart strikes recently, maybe it'll bring a lot of attention to it. So. Yeah, and I wanted to speak to something Robert just uh, mentioned about the whole new the new media and how it's sort of uh, the the social media is starting to be you know more and more relevant. Um, did anybody see Z's tweets or did anybody watch the action at the Bainport protest today? Oh, I was going to bring that um, up too. Okay, tell us about that Z because that was awesome and that was a new streamer, right? Yeah, it was his first day streaming, he said. Um, and he did a great job. Um, the, I don't have the link right handy, um, but I'll get it. Um, they had a protest at the Sensata factory again, of course, and there was 12 people arrested. Jesse Jackson was there to bring some more attention to it, and he got arrested along with 12 other people. And it was a, it was really great to watch these people working together in solidarity and there were um, cars going by that were beeping and they all went to the jail for jail support and as each person walked out of the jail jail there was just this huge round of applause and everything for the people who came out it was it was really great so um, I think it was a good example of um, how new media can be so effective because you know, nobody else would would have had that guy and then uh, that on, and then somebody had the self motivation and all to grab a camera and say, "Hey, I can plug in and I can do this, and at least I can get it out." And you know, it wasn't high def and it wasn't slick, but it was live and you could see it happening and how important that is. And um, I can't encourage people uh, enough to distribute to distribute this stuff far and wide by every every possible method we need to get these messages out there when people get it in front of them they recognize um, what's going on so well and um, if we you have, have twitter if you have twitter and everything you know i was like tweeting to huffington post live and i was tweeting to democracy now um, so you can get the news stories out to the bigger places. Um, you know, when I first went, there was only, you know, a few viewers. Um, and then you tweet it out and you get other people interested. And then, you know, next thing you know, it's up to 40 or 50 viewers. Um, and then they're passing right, it on. Right. So don't, for the people know. who don't know, I'm pretty sure... Every, most people here know what's going on in Freeport, in Indiana, but uh, Sensata, which is a company owned by Bain Capital, is closing, um, and they are um, basically protesting the closing, asking for Mitt Romney to save their jobs, to at least come and talk to them, and of course there's been crickets on that end. Um, <laughs> but the the really sad thing about this plant closing is that they made a huge profit, one point three billion dollars in net profit. They made, um, and they brought Chinese workers over that they had to train, that were taking their jobs, and what I had heard, I don't, I'm not sure if this is completely factual, but it's a, an average of 99 cents an hour that they're paying these new workers. Well, so. you know, and, and so here's the deal, right? 
they're closing the plant because they didn't make enough money. They didn't make enough money. That wasn't enough profit. So exactly. it's a, it's just they're being greed heads. Just greed heads. It what really you is. Do? It, well, and you know, China is building them their new factory. Um, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes of why these companies move overseas. Um, you know, they get kickbacks and and factories built and the energy cost is a lot cheaper and really the sad thing is is the real worrisome thing is the quality of the parts that they're going to be making now because they're very important car parts um, that could you know potentially be defective and, and made very cheaply so yeah, well well here's here's a just a little trivia <laughs> bit that maybe I'm the last person in the world to know, to know that did you know the, the Chinese own a uh, majority share in the car company Volvo. I didn't know that. Isn't that a I, German? Is that a no, German? Volvo's Swedish, Swedish, right? Swedish, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you know, high quality, blah, blah, blah. So, you huh. know, um, that's that was kind of kind of interesting to me. I mean, <clears throat> good good for them, but, you know, China's an economic force, and I think um, there's a lot of stuff going on in debates about that but you know you hear all the blah 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 oh we're gonna make 12 million jobs we're gonna make 8 million jobs we're gonna make blah blah you know I'm like oh where are they coming from unicorn land because you know you just can't <laughs> say I'm gonna do it out of thin air and poof you know <laughs> well um, I really do believe a lot of Obama's job plans would have been more sustainable it's not this pie in the sky theory of trickle down tax cuts and then jobs are magically going to be creative and created and all of that stuff but I really do believe we need to spend money on our infrastructure right. we, we've got to fix our bridges we've got to fix our schools we've got to fix the our internet infrastructure um, if we want to compete um, and we've got to invest in education and what what's happening now is all of those things are being cut um, so we're just going to lag further and further behind if we right, don't right. if we don't what in my mind what I think is we've got to take the money back from the top and reinvest it and it is distribution but that's what taxes are taxes are redistribution so to me that's the only thing that's really going to be any kind of sustainable thing that grows the economy in this environment. Um, does anyone want to hear my jobs plan? Because I got one and it ties back into the whole Detroit thing. Yeah, what's your jobs plan? <laughs> no, no, so here we go. So, you, you know, where I'm in Detroit, we went by all these empty manufacturing plants. A lot of them were the Ford, like Rouge River plants and stuff like that. And so, here's the thing. In the United States, there's a lot of people who want to work, who need work that have skills. Um, there's a lot of facilities that are standing empty that could be occupied to create something. Now we take the idea of the the energy crisis, where these these I almost you know, used a whole lot of profanity in a string, but we got the tar sands, we got the fracking, we got the blah blah blah, we got the offshore drilling, we got this, we got that, all petrol based, coal mining, but it just goes on and on and on, right? So I say my jobs plan is stop all that, just stop it, just say no, concentrate on solar, responsible hydro and wind, take all these people, get these plants tooled up, fired up, create all these these technologies that are already in existence but they just are crushed down by the powers that be and by the you know petrol energy companies and and just do it all ourselves. Just build it ourselves, implement it ourselves and uh, I gotta take a call. You guys are saved from my rant. Call <laughs> from John Leonard. To accept, press one. Send a Hey Johnny, you, you you're interrupting my jobs plan, but go ahead, because nobody wanted to hear it. <laughs> uh, oh, I guess my uh, my sound must be off or something. I got nothing but crickets, but I, I had that 
the web center that somebody was talking about, but I think it's a, uh, I thought it was like the, the sword sound from Zorro when he went making the Z, so I thought it was then a back of center Z in the background or something, but a little FP or a lazy or something. But. Oh, probably. Or it was the alphabet agencies. Good evening, people. I hope you're enjoying the show tonight. <laughs> That's right. Mind, Welcome, everybody. Right? <laughs> Say again? What's on your mind? Well, you know, I got a, what's not on my mind? I got a whole crap load of stuff, but uh, I, I don't want to be, this isn't the Johnny show, but you said cricket, so what the heck? Uh, Joe and Jiminy, I can step right in there. Uh, I had actually, uh, let me go over to my Titan pad. I, I, I dropped all those, uh, the GMO links there about, you know, we got to get this Proposition 37 going out there. California's on the front line. They're going to, we need to get that crap labeled, you know. They don't have Absolutely. to stop making it, but at least let us know. If you guys didn't see Democracy Now! this morning, Amy Goodman was taking some, some clown to school about that. He, you know, he was a, a proponent of, he was a GMO proponent, right? And she was just raking him over the coals right and left. I, I don't, I mean, well, I have some problem with the messing with it, but not all innovations will be bad, but label the crap. You know, we're eating this and you're not letting us what, you know, know what it is. It's not like, uh, you know, you when, the, when you're getting street drugs, you still want to know what the fuck's in there or what the heck's in there. That's what I mean. Um, <laughs> you know, they're, they're, who knows what they're cutting the stuff with, you know, spider bacteria or something. Well, I don't need that in my tomato. So anyway, that's the GMO thing. Uh, there's, there's plenty of, uh, that's, that's important to get that out. You need to do a show before election day on that. So that anybody who's out there and they know somebody out in California, we got to reinforce the people in California. So that if California gets the stuff labeled, it'll be the whole United States gets things labeled, and, and that's that'll be a victory for us. And then people can make an informed choice. You know, that's Good that's all I'm looking for is just the ability to make an informed choice. Uh, we don't have to shut them down. And then as a sort of joke follow up for the for that, let me click over to my little notepad notes here, but. <clears throat> As a tongue-in-cheek follow-up, if Monsanto was going to GMO some weed, what kind of changes would we like to get included into the mix? <laughs> I don't want any GMO you know, weed, I, for why, Christ's sake. Why are they doing that for us, you know? He's a comedian, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I'd like to... Quite a reach out messages, do it with you, or you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so let's see. Uh, oh, some some other uh, suggestions for new shows or topics deserving and needing to get covered. Uh, well, uh, these are in no particular order, and I don't have them posted in the title link. I'm just reading off my uh, my cheat sheet here. Uh, chemtrails. You know what are they, and why are they, and why don't people care more? You know, that's, uh, and then a year or two ago, I was oblivious about it too. But you know, you look up in the sky and these stripes that stay up there all things on day. That is not natural, folks. That is not natural. Just pay attention. You know, vapor trail, contrail will disappear in a few minutes. And this is just a skinny line. These lines stay there forever and they get bigger and flat up the whole sky. And they, they come, in, you know, clouds don't, don't come in tic tac toe grid works. You know, that's not a natural cloud. <laughs> you know, that is not natural. And people just don't care. I, you know, what the hell is it and why is it? You know? I mean, and that'll tell us who it is. We know, we know sort of who it is, but, you know, it's people in airplanes, but anyways. Uh, so, but, but that, that's not a, that could be a future, uh, you know, future show because the chemtrails aren't going away and then, you know, the election stuff happens, you know, the next week or two, so we gotta get, gotta get that stuff down. Uh, but so with some other, other suggestions for shows. And you let me know if you have uh, if there's other people I'm not reading the chat. So if anybody wants, if I'm holding anybody up, you just kick me off. I'm just your filler here. Yeah. You know well, you know, here's a, it's like I only got the one line, so I never know if somebody's trying to call in. So if somebody yeah, but they can type in the chat saying, "Come yeah, on, yeah. tell that sucker to get off." <laughs> <laughs> that'll that'll have to be their uh, their clue. So uh, what else do we have? Uh, oh, so maybe we could do some shows on uh, on the uses of hemp like for green renewables or textile industry or et cetera. And, and, and also I, I, I just found a link the other day. It's the ability to clean dirty soil, get the metals and oil out of soils. You know, for, for just a lowly weed, it really does amazing things underground and, and over the ground, you know. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's just for hemp, which is different than cannabis. You know, we could also do shows on, uh, on cannabis, you know, for medical and or recreational usages. <clears throat> so you got two shows, for one for hemp and one for cannabis. <clears throat> Uh, what else do we got here? 
Oh, uh, and then we have on being, becoming, tweaking, supporting, promoting, protecting the new media. The streamers, the bloggers, the social networkers, picking up the drop ball of the mainstream media. Uh, and maybe that's just a conversation could happen you know, at yeah. any time, or it's ongoing, ongoing all the time. But, you know, we are. There's still wobbly trailer wheels, as, as well, pretty much every week, technologically, you're showing us. But we're, we're out there fighting, and we're, we're getting it done, you know? So we're, we're part of the new media, and then we're, you know, the old media isn't working, so we're, we're making them irrelevant, and, and we're going to learn and, and, and get bigger, and, and they're going to get relevant or get pushed aside. So that's. Well, you know my motto. That's what I feel about it. Make your own damn media. That's what I say. <laughs> well, that's that's why I'm here. To, I'm, I'm I'm just riding coattails on your media. That's all. I'm I'm, well, no. I'm your backer. Well, well, you're you're about to get get uh, um, bumped because our our friend clearly says she wants to call in. So <laughs> we we want to let. I, her I, well, I'll, I'll listen. Do I have anything else important? Uh, all right. A show on police brutality and the, versus the general population neutrality. How can we bridge that gap? Is it just lack of info? Ignorance is bliss. Is a cure for ignorance? Uh, and uh, da, 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 da. I think that was the last one. Excellent. Okay, so well, I'm sorry. Good idea. And, and, and take, take it away clearly. We're and make you bye, guys. And we'll go back, back to the chat. And if you, anybody wants to read me, I'm in the Titan pad working. Bye bye. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you. All right, that's our friend Johnny, and you guys should take a look at the Titan Pad because you know he's he's a busy guy in there. Um, Johnny is a good friend of the channel, been a long time supporter, and um, he, here we go, a call coming in. Uh oh, <laughs> try it again. Clear something <laughs> happened. We got disconnected. Dead air. Say something, Z. Oh, Tell her what hey. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was waiting. Um, well, I did. Something that Johnny said made me uh, want to mention something that we really need a push behind these ballot initiatives. It seems to me like there's so much talk about, you know, not voting or a vote for Obama and a vote for Romney is more of the status quo kind of stuff, but there are really serious ballot issues that are going on across the country, um, and it's really important to get out there and vote. You don't have to fill in anything for the presidential election if you don't want to. Just get out there and vote. Vote um, for your local anyway. stuff. Call from Mayor Accept. Press one. Descend. There we go. It's working. Clearly. Now. Hi, Art. Hi, Jenna. Hi. How Hello. are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm fine. I didn't hang up on you. I think we had a Google hiccup. I just wanted to make that clear to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you wouldn't hang up on me. What's on your mind? Hey, I want. I'd like to continue the rant on the energy and people getting jobs, the energy crisis, what I think they should do is take all those empty buildings that are in all the downtown areas and put in the bicycle generators. And then open it up to the public. Maybe people that are working in those areas can go during their lunch hours or people that are getting um, welfare checks or whatever that can't find jobs, they could come down there collect their checks, they have to put in an hour or two at the bicycle generators, and then that could produce enough electricity for I don't know how many government buildings. Also, that would make the people that are uh, getting the government assistance, that would get them in better shape health-wise. You'd be offering a free gym for people. Uh, I think that about covers it, but I really think, oh, and also it would do something with those buildings, and then you could hire some people to be, um, uh, you know, to watch the kids while their mothers go collect their checks, and then come back and do their bit on the bikes and stuff like that. Uh, I just think that would help a lot of people out, health-wise and otherwise. Well, that's a good idea, and also you make a point about empty buildings, and I don't know if anybody listens to Lee Camp or not, 
but he did a piece not too long ago on how there's probably enough empty Barnes and Nobles buildings in the United States to house every homeless person and give them all their own franchise, right? Um, so we, oh. we have all these, uh, and it was a satirical comment, but the point being, there's empty buildings, there's people who need shelter or, or other things like you pointed out, so why not utilize them? Yes, exactly. How hard would it be to put showers and lockers in those empty uh, buildings? And uh, at least people would have, they wouldn't, might not have a place to stay overnight, but they could get cleaned up, they could keep their stuff someplace. Yeah, I, I like that. And it's like a, um, sort of like a community center. And then you could, you could use those spaces as, as community centers um, and sustainable community centers, like you were saying, that's a great idea. And I want to, okay, you, you know, you said, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but you said, I think what they should do, right? Is that how you phrased it? Um, uh, maybe I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know what you're referring to. Well, the where I'm going with is it is I'm really interested in what we can do, what we can do. Okay. You know, so, okay. so what do we do to make that happen? How do we mobilize? How do we demand it? How do we facilitate it? You, you know, how can we convince whoever owns that building or whoever has those resources, how can we do it? How can we help it be done? You know, um, it's, a, yeah. it's a small change of a mindset, but maybe we could do it in each of our, like in my little town, there's a bunch of empty buildings. And, you know, so there's the question, what can we do? Well, I, when I originally thought of this, it was because I was thinking of the people that get um, assistance checks or whatever, and that don't have a job and maybe have some extra spare time, you know? Right. And so they could come downtown when they pick up their checks. So that was connecting with the government, you know, I mean, at least uh, the government, uh, uh, meaning us in the government, but uh, at least they would be getting something for giving these people checks. And uh, and then it just, you know, the idea just took off with uh, the people that work downtown could also do it. And, uh, yeah, but you're right, it, it could be something set up by by us or by somebody who has that mindset that they could do that. Um, and, you know, I, it reminds me, when we talked about this a little bit, and I want to throw this out to the chat while you're on the line, that we're, we're talking about on OPN how to do some programming around lessons we've learned from all the, all the different shows and interviews and also um, maybe working on how we can do community organizing, like, you know, a toolbox for each of us. Um, and I was wondering okay, if, that, yes. if that's of interest to the uh, channel, because we, we would love to do that. And we want to do stuff you guys are interested in. We'll, yeah, so, but I love your idea, clearly. I'm actually very interested in those bicycle generators myself. Yeah, I love the bike generators. When they were in Ducati, that was awesome. And the trampoline, when they were trying to make the trampoline one, that was <laughs> that was another good. Yeah, that would have been. I would have gone for that. I'd go downtown to do that. Yeah, inventive so, ideas. That's going to be our solutions. But it's got to come from the ground up. It has. I mean, we have to do it ourselves. We 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 cannot wait for them to do the things they should do. Yeah, I think right. uh, I don't know who uh, that could be presented to, like the mayor or something of town, but or because the checks come from the federal government, I guess. So uh, I don't know how that would all tie in, but um, yeah, I don't know. If any, if everybody wants to spread that idea around, maybe some senator or something will hear about it, and it'll it'll gain some momentum. So. Okay, that's my two cents worth for tonight, well, and uh, love the in. show. It's like spreading wildflower seeds. You just got to throw them out there and hope they take take root. 
Yeah, yeah, I love your images, Art. <laughs> okay, I'll talk to you folks later then. All right, good night. Bye, Clearly. Okay, love you. Bye, bye. Love you too. You know that is, I I'm just uh, so amazed by that the thought of doing that and like all of these things are spinning my head. I'm thinking of looking at people in a gym and all of that energy that they're using to stay fit and healthy on different exercise machines. Think about you know walking by a window and watching all of that. I think Zena and, just mute. Oh, did you mute yourself? What's it? You're hello? getting excited. <laughs> can, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. yeah I go. think I maybe I lost Google for a little bit. <laughs> But um, I, I just, it's. I think that's a really wonderful idea. Like we can use something that everybody already does. I mean, people spend hundreds and thousands of dollars to go to gyms to expel energy. So why not tie that to something that's sustainable? I agree. I agree. That I'm is not a great. I'm not a. I wouldn't have ever even thought of it. <laughs> well, you know, I'm not a gym person, and people go to me. We live out in the woods, and people go, um, you know, I should go to the gym. I'm like, I, I don't have time to go to the gym. I got to split wood, or I got to do this, or I got to do that. When I'm expending energy, I want to have something to show for it. <laughs> but people in the cities don't have that luxury, you know. So they pay for gyms, and they, you know, and and in the winter. I know people who go walking through the mall, you know, so they're not outside, so they can still do their walking and stuff. So, you know, people could be on treadmills, bicycles, the elliptus machines. All of those machines could generate power. Yeah, yeah. And it's just, um, you know, you could do that. Now we're getting into another arena I have interest in. You can do that at home. Um, and uh, I'm actually working on a project with the community garden in the other count, the next county over, um, on a small-scale sustainable power setup. So we're going to put in one wind generator and one solar panel with the battery stuff and all that, because I have some experience in my previous life uh, building that kind of stuff. But you can do that at home. Um, I think Nate just mentioned and and. You know, you could take the bicycle generator, you hook it to a deep cycle battery, and you can run, you know, your electronics for a while off a deep cycle battery. You know, it's it's just it's if people can skill share and educate each other, there are all kinds of possibilities. I have a friend that lives up in Idaho off the grid. He and his family have run their whole household off discarded car batteries for 40 years. 40 years. Wow. He goes to the junkyard. He gets these car batteries. He wires them all together. They have a little solar collector. You know, it charges them. And so, 40 years, he's been, they have all the electricity they want and need. Wow. That's so, amazing. it can be done. So, here's Here's my quote for the day, um, because everybody asked for it, right? <laughs> <laughs> when you when you're talking to people and you say, well, "Why didn't that work out?" or you know, "What happened?" and "Why didn't that project come to fruition?" and all that, you always get all these explanations. Well, it costs too much money, or it's too much obstruction, too much politics, not enough resources, yada yada yada. And so my quote for the day that that failure very often is not so much a lack of resources as it is a lack of resourcefulness. So when you come up against that wall, do you say, oh, I ran into the wall? Or are you resourceful and you go over, around it, under it, through it, beyond it, past it? you know the question is what do you do when you hit the wall so so there's my I just read that read that <clears throat> recently so uh, failure is not a lack of resources is a lack of resourcefulness you know which is you know kind of a, a very generalized statement but it's something worth thinking about right we have to change our thinking Z you say it all the time about the consciousness yeah 
I mean, I'm a very strong believer in uh, the energy that you put out is what is going to be created in the world. So for me, it's it's really important, you know, about the type of energy that I put into the world and the things that I want to see happen because negative creates more negative and positive creates more positive. So not that I'm never negative, but (laughs) I try to stay in a place of thinking of what what can happen and in a positive way instead of doomed that nothing good's ever going to happen. Yeah, and I have to say doing these Mm. shows and working with all you people and having all the exchanges we do and all our guests and all the just all the lessons we've learned um, every day I get up and I think about people like what John Zangus is doing and what what Mary Nichols is doing with the houseless out out there uh, what Lorenzo and Elizabeth are doing down there on the tar sands occupation and you know documenting that what Occupy Eye does when he goes out in the field what all there's so many people doing so many good things so the the seeds are out there and Chris I I want to comment on on your your statement right there in the chat for the first time in my 50 years I'm scared about with this stuff in the USA this this is one of the issues we have to be fearless we have to be fearless it it does suck terribly and everybody admits that when the elections happen it's going to suck terribly it doesn't matter who wins on January 1st the budget sequestration is going to come we're going to feel our first pain as a country we're going to start getting a taste of what's happening in Spain we're going to get a taste of what's happening in Greece Um, Italy, Portugal, Ireland, you name it they've they've had their their taste of it and are living through it it's it's catching up with us so we can be fearful or we can get it together and respond to all those challenges in spite of them and in response to them if we are organized and focused and fearless we can turn things around what, there's going to be food I've shortages. Learned, there's going to be gas shortages. What, Go. I, I just wanted to say what I've learned is that when tragedy up, comes upon you, I think and people, I what what comes out of that is the best of human nature as well. Like people do become resourceful. People, I, I maybe it's because that's what I look towards because you could focus on the negative of that but through any kind of tragedy or um, any kind of struggles there's always this beautiful thing that rises up out of people where people become community again Um, you know I've just witnessed it time and time and time again uh, when bad things happen so we have each other we live together it's not going to be the end of the world America, think about this. America has everything it needs to sustain itself. So we can get through it, no matter how bad it gets. And we can do better than get through it. We can we can make it. We can work. make it. We can make it better than what it was and, before. And we can make it work for us. And we can make it work for. We can help other people to make it work you know this world does not have to be the way it is it's the way it is because exactly what Ruby's saying right there it's the way it is because the powers that be have infected us with fear they've infected us with fear they've infected us with this sense of consumption and greed and if we can transcend that we'll will do so much great and the thing that you were talking about with challenges when things get bad mm-hmm. if if you think about it and the best example I have personally was uh, Hurricane Hugo in 88 in North Carolina mm-hmm. 
totally destroyed a lot of places. And I lived in a community at that time which was wrecked. And, you know, it was fairly urban. Nobody knew, you know, people didn't know each other and all that. When the trees came down, the roads were closed, the power was off for everybody. It was a great equalizer. And people came out of their homes and it became not a competitive situation but a cooperative situation. Yep. Who had ice? Who had grills? Who had chainsaws? Who could help somebody get a tree off their house? All this stuff. Um, you, you got to know your neighbors by necessity because if you have a 200 foot oak tree laying across the middle of your house crash through it, you're not going to move it yourself. Yep. So, you know, <clears throat> It became a point in time where people transcended the individuality and worked for the collective good of everybody, and they traded, and and they they helped each other out. So, um, Organizer X said the other night that things might need to get get um, a lot worse before they get better. I'm hoping they don't have to, but I wonder what it takes to wake people up and um, things are bad enough now I mean I don't know what the hell we're waiting for you know? <laughs> <laughs> well Good I Lord. see so many people working I you know I, I choose to focus on the things that are happening the people that are out there doing the good stuff you know right. we people are waking up you know we are on the yeah. verge so but don't you don't you think that transcending fear thing is is it is got I some think, value? I think it definitely has to be part of the equation. Yeah, I mean, because we're all like those of us at work. You know, we're in fear of losing our jobs. We're in fear of lo you not being able to pay our mortgage. We, and you and I talked about this the other day. You're in fear of not being able to buy the heating fuel or propane, mm -hmm. and so you make choices based on that fear. But if you concede that point and don't let it determine your choices you find you find creative alternatives to maintain and actually break that stranglehold yeah. um, exactly. so this kind of turned into the A and Z talk show I didn't mean for it to do that <laughs> kind of, we <laughs> kind of went off on a tangent there but I think it was valuable hopefully <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah we, we probably lost at least half our viewers on that one so has anybody got a call? You guys want to call in, or you want us to wrap it for for this evening? Um, I actually am a half hour away from uh, OPN World Headquarters because the internet is broken on my mountaintop. Talking about, um, you know. So you did go down there. Yeah, well, I actually came into the uh, workplace because um, you know the. Internet works. Oh, the number, it's right there on the screen there, Barb, and we would love for you to call 828-705-1676. A new voice. Yeah, yeah Barb, so, call it. So we, yeah, yeah a little, <laughs> we, we can tell you're paying real close attention to the show. Um, <laughs> so yeah, what we learned tonight is paying I can Paying attention to the people, not the screen. That's a I good thing. I can take <laughs> this show on the road. So, I mean, I literally have it all you know in a little suitcase and I can take it on the road so now we know as long as we have an internet connection and a little bit of power we're good and Absolutely. now that we got clearly in the bicycle generator Man, if I had a sidekick here you know you that could pedal. image is just sticking in my brain of all the people yeah, in the yeah, gym right? you know <laughs> <laughs> it's totally great I even like the idea in an urban area, like I could haul all this on a bicycle, and then you you park the bicycle, hook up the generator, and power the show and do the show. You know, wouldn't that be great? <laughs> totally. These are the and, things I'm talking Nate about. And Nate actually people. said something about it being used to to charge their phones and their devices and everything. Oh way, yeah, yeah. A way to do yeah. that. It's really good to see Occupy Nate on tonight. So yeah, we're really glad Nate, to have you join us. So it's great to see everyone that's joining us tonight. Yeah, is um is Barb going to call or is she snake bit? She, she um you know, but um yeah. So I um since I'm always preaching and 
ranting and pontificating about making things happen, doing stuff and all that. I'm sitting at home, I'm going, man, I don't want to drive all the way over there just to use the internet. Um, blah, blah, blah. And then I'm like, wait a minute, if I don't do that, that makes me a hypocrite and I'm slack. <laughs> and I don't want to be slack. So um, I hope Bar doesn't get the the yeah, it's not ringing. I wonder oh. if the Google the Google thing is. Remember how that? Yeah, let me try yeah. and see if it works for me. Maybe we yeah. can. Maybe you can reset it or replug it in or something. Um, I can reboot my phone. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe it just got to... tired. Yeah. So Barb, did you get the? Uh, the like not available thing because I've gotten all kinds of pop-ups oh here we go something's happening no that was me no it's not it's not awesome hi Barb Dwyer oh click start to press one to send a voicemail Barb welcome to OPN hey Barb <laughs> hey oh man this is weird this is too much media <laughs> I mean <laughs> <laughs> this is the leveraging the media. This is the new media in action. Where are you calling us from? Tell us your geography. Oh, I'm in Butte, Montana. Hot dog. I just love the fact we're getting a call from Butte, Montana. <laughs> What's it like in Butte these days? Is it winter yet? Oh, yeah. We had snow on the ground this morning. It melted, but yeah, yeah we, we had snow on the ground for two mornings now. Excellent. We've, we've had a little snow, snow on our, our high, high mountain once, but we've also been having the 80-degree days that John was talking about. So what's <laughs> on your mind tonight? It's really exciting that you called. I'll try not to dominate the conversation. <laughs> no, I finally realized this number was like right on the screen, and I'm in the chat going, where's the number? Where's the number? <laughs> anyway, um, no, I love that you guys were talking about Snow Jam. And you were talking about how in the South everybody goes to the house that has power and you pretty much know the whole time you live there that if the power goes out, you're going to be at that person's house, right? Right, right. Yeah, well, we talked about that today in free scaling. And it, in fact, we talked about it quite, you know, good quiet length. Um, it's archived over at LSX if you guys want to listen to it. But it occurred to me today that that is probably the most important aspect that we need to reestablish. We need to just not ask permission and not wait on anybody, but just reestablish that community within our immediate area that we, you know, people your age and my age, are, we remember that from when we were kids. Right. And that's, and that's been lost in just our lifetime. You know, and if there's any great gift we can give back to this society and like pick up the uh, stuff and walk your talk, that's the one to do. Yep. It's to reestablish knowing who your neighbor is, knowing if they're okay, knowing if that old lady you see walking by every day with the bags, making sure that, you know, she's not eating like cat food casserole, making sure that your front people around you are okay. And that if something does happen, you can rely on them and that they know they can rely on you. And I really think that that is, that I just had a epiphany about it this afternoon and just said, dang, we need to do this. So I was so thrilled to come in and hear you guys were talking about it too. Well, it it's on my mind a lot because you know it's just that's been just something I've been really wrestling with. It's like what can I do as a person, or what can we do? Like what can all the chatters do? And so um, in forcing myself to actually do something, I'm giving a community presentation in the uh, next county over next week. So I've been reading and writing a lot. And the, the more research I do, the more I, I am reminded that we're a lot more alike than we might imagine, all of us. That the people in Spain, the people in Greece, the people in Italy, Portugal, all, everybody's dealing with the same problems. You know, we're all, we're all dealing with the same problems. We just don't have the, the connectivity, the person-to-person, -person, you know, actual physical, tactile connectivity. And then I think about like those the the hurricane disaster and I I grew up on a farm and so everybody knew everybody in the communities because it was a necessity you know and right. so how do we how do we who have been lucky enough to have that experience um help remind people about that 
and bring them together, and that's all a function of community organizing, you know. And so, yep. I, I'm sure you experience that in Butte because people are spread far and wide, right? Well, Butte is actually a pretty small city. They say it's a town that thinks it's a city, or a city that thinks it's a town. It's only about thirty-four thousand people. But these people who are, you know, I just like I keep saying this, our age, they grew up together. These people went to kindergarten together. They all went to the same church, and now they're in their fifties. Their grandkids play together. I mean, it's the, the single most richest resource in Butte, Montana, is the fact that it is a community. And because it was a mining community, they're fairly welcoming of newcomers as long as you kind of earn your place. You, you know, you don't, you, you know, it is Montana. You're not just going to walk in and be accepted. But it is the most welcoming community that I've been in. And I, and I have been in trouble here, and, and I have been helped by people who were from Butte, and I tried to give that back. But seriously, when you said, what can we do, I will tell you the thing to do, and that is walk outside your front door, walk to your neighbor's house, knock on the door and say, hi, my name is uh, Barb Dwyer. I've been running out here for a year, and I haven't had the nerve to come over and say hello. So hello. You know, and if you need something, if I have it, you know, I'm happy to share it. And then, you know, I'll watch your place, you watch my place, and, you know, that's how it starts. Yep, that's a good point. That's that's how it starts here, too. And, you know, it's, it's tragic that it generally starts under duress. Um, so the idea is we should get out in front of it. You know, we should... We should make that walk. We should we should have that conversation before you know the situation arises. Like in in the on the mountain I live at, there's two of us that have you know portable generators, and so when the when the power goes out and it's out for a while, we we skid those around so everybody can charge their refrigerators and do that because there's a, several elderly people or people who can't get around, and so. We all try to share that stuff, and that's all. That's what it takes, you know. And people can depend on people, and it's, um, you know, it's going to be so necessary. And I'm here to tell you, Barn may or may not call, but he had a good question. What is austerity going to look like in the U.S.? What it's going to look like is it's going to suck, but it's going to bring people together. Not that I want us to have I'm, to. I'm too poor. I'm too poor to even comprehend what austerity right. is. You know, I, exactly. I mean, two right. years ago, almost, we're already you know, so living I'm, I'm not somebody in a sticky car, you know, running around with nice clothes and all that. I've I've been destitute and poor for quite a while. Yes. And what I've learned is the most generous communities are those who have nothing. The people who are the most willing to help someone who is in need are those who have only marginally more than the person who is in need. And personally, I think it's something that we could all stand to learn from those communities. Right. Some generosity of spirit and some willingness to share. Fundamental, you know, life skills. So... um, it's great. I'm so glad you called in tonight. Thank you so much. It's so good to hear your voice. Yeah. And well, we, here I am, and now we're on the phone. I've got the computer going, and so I'm just like, wow, we need some more tech. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I just want to remind everybody that free skilling is on Wednesday, and it's uh, uh, 8 p.m. in UK, and that translates to 3 p.m. Eastern time. And we talk about this is what we talk about every Wednesday. Right. So I, I had to jump in because I was like, oh my God, we were just doing this today. Yeah, that's great. So throw, anyway. Throw the link up in the chat if you if you want to that. So, um, yeah, because that's a, I think, free skilling, skill sharing, free school, all that stuff, any way we can educate or be educated is going to serve us well. Oh, yeah, too. Um, we have Global Roundtable tomorrow, and it's probably going to be pretty good. Uh, that's at 7 on the U.K. time, and it's... Um, uh, oh dear, it's at noon in Montana, but it's, uh, what is that, 2 o'clock on the East Coast. Right. So, yeah, um, anyway, thank you very much. Thank you for bringing this up, and thank you for talking about it. I think the more people who can talk about it, the better. Great. Well, have a good evening out there in Butte. Thanks for calling. Thank you so much for good calling night, guys. in, Barb. I just love Barb. She's a mumble friend. <laughs> I met Barb months and months ago. 
That she's, was outstanding. She's that really outstanding. an extraordinary woman, actually. She's she's very kind and um, compassionate, and I haven't been to free skilling in so long. I was actually at some of the very first free skilling meetings, um, and they would talk about organic gardening and sustainable living. Um, it's really a great meeting for people who are interested in, you know, what they can do. <coughs> so I'm I'm trying to get get Barnabas to call. So he, he you know Barnabas, you can be the last call of the evening because you know I need need to get heading towards my beauty sleep because it should start working um, any day now. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, we've gone pretty pretty far over um, tonight, but it's been great, wonderful conversation. It's great to hear from new people calling in everybody um you know don't be shy we want to hear all of you um yep. so next time we're on give us a call yeah and um so where we're waiting to see if we get any more calls you can you tell us what um might be coming up on the uh, calendar oh for opn yeah um, what is going no, on? No, no, for the uh, Republican Party. I don't know. I what don't do you know. Think? My brain is fried. <laughs> what have we got going on? <laughs> do you need me to look up the calendar? I can look up the calendar. Probably I'm trying to you. open it. No, no, I got it right. Let's see what we got. I got the, uh, so we just here. This is this week. So next week we got the radio show, the OPN A to Z Call in show on Wednesday. Oh no, it's Halloween, right? Are we going yeah, to do a show? Yeah, we're not doing we just... a show next week because it's Halloween night. Okay, um, so we felt like people probably wouldn't be interested because there's probably going to be a lot of good streams on, and then people with family stuff and all that. So, no call in show next Wednesday night. Um, next Thursday night, the first is when I'm doing the uh, community presentation and uh, my plan is to try to stream that if um, anybody's interested in it, the title of it is collective effort for common good the power of community um, so it's going to be over at the Yancey County Public Library in the big meeting room and um, <coughs> I'm just going to do some audio visual stuff and um, have a conversation and um, you know the goal is to um, help in, help inspire people or just plant those seeds you know to to mobilize and come together there's there's issues all over we have the same issues everybody does we live in a county that has a population of about 20,000 people 25 percent one quarter of the county has issues with food security that means they don't have enough to eat um, either by accessibility affordability um, you know shut-ins all all that kind of stuff um, but but one quarter of the county in a rural area which would be designated as agricultural has a challenge to get enough to eat every day. We have a call coming in. Let's see what that's about. Call from Robin Shortwide to accept. Press 1 to send a voice. Robin. Shorty, calling in. Hey, Mark. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Oh, I'm not too bad. I'm hanging in there. How are you? I'm good. I see you're back online and you can actually see what's going on. Yeah, yeah, I've been I've been fighting to get my screen magnified for so long now, and because I can't see, my glasses are dead. Uh, and this guy just put it together for me, and I can see the chat now. Excellent. So I don't have to strain myself to do so. And uh, so, is there a topic? Um, no, it's just an open mic. What's on your mind? What's on my mind? Um. I think that if Romney gets elected, we might as well bend over and kiss our asses goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. <laughs> That's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
That's so, awesome. So, so <laughs> would would it be a safe assumption to guess that you are maybe going to vote for one of the two predominant parties? Uh, yes, I am going to vote one of the two pertinent parties, and uh, it is not Republican. Yeah. Well, we you know we had our our panel on the value of voting uh, Monday night. And so, you know, that was really interesting. So why don't you, you know, if we need a quick topic, why don't you touch on the value of voting? Why will you vote? And, you know, what does it matter? Um, I don't know if it matters. I really don't. I don't think it does. Because you get people like Jill Stein that's running for president. She could get the popular vote. She could get 100% popular vote. But they're not going to elect her as president. She won't have the electoral votes. Right. You know, and unfortunately, my theory is that everybody that votes for somebody else instead of one of the two parties is giving a vote to the wrong party. Right, right. Well, you know, and this is the question, right? And we talked about this Monday night, and I have struggled with this, and, and Zena's heard me talk about it a lot. Um, and, and even she, you know, she's already early voted, and you know, I'm going to do the same. But you, the truth is, you know, we're, we can't break the, the two-party duopoly unless we vote alternatively. But if we vote alternatively, things can get so bad so fast and so many people will suffer so much pain you know then I have a, a moral issue around all that so it, it's it's been a struggle so my resolution is my personal resolution is you have to vote tactically to prevent the the um, you have to stand in the way and be an obstruction to people suffering, and you do that by tactical voting. And I'm in a swing state, right. so you know it's a big issue, right? Right. Well, I, I agree that she would make a great president, but um, you know, I, I have to choose a lesser of two evils. Right. Right. Well, you I'm, know, I'm really um, interested in what are we going to do. Because we all agree this is messed up. We all agree the options are terrible. We all agree, you know, so we all agree. But what are we going to do about it? Again, with the word we, what are we going to do about it? We have two years before midterm. I'm con conceding this whole election situation. How can we break that stranglehold? That's the, that's the well, million dollar question. I, I think we shouldn't be using voting machines that are created by Romney's son. I think that would go a long way. Yep. You know, uh, if that's not a conflict of interest, I don't know what it is. Um, uh, what's his name had the, had the thing with uh, Halliburton where uh, he'd been part of that corporation. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were over, you know, they were overseas providing everything without a bid, and um, and I just found out that Romney's son is making voting machines. Right. Well, you know, we and, we have to be accurate in that that he is a part owner of a business enterprise that does include. Uh -huh the Diebold voting machine. So somebody took us to task the other night on accuracy of facts and I think that was really good. So it's it's not like he actually owns each individual own, owning voting machine, but he is involved with a company right. that controls the voting machines and there's just there's just something wrong about that. You know, there's That's just, a it's conflict just wrong. of interest. Right. Yeah, it's a total conflict of interest. So yeah. Yeah, I mean, we've got to stand you know, so up against stuff like that. I, I still remember, I'm sure everybody remembers the hanging chat incident in Florida when Bush was um, made president. Yeah. And it was his brother that made the decision. There was a conflict of interest there. Right, right. Um, you know, the, we have to boycott. It's what we have to do. 
Well, and people have to stand up and say, I'm not using this machine. Right. But then we have to you vote know. anyway. We have to figure out how to vote anyway. I just I read an article about the president of Turkey um, last night. And mm -hmm. do you know he was he was um, actually banned by the Turkish government from running for office, and the Turkish people still elected him. Like go really? Figure. Yeah, I mean it was it's like an incredible story. And this this article was not you know a supporting or against them. It was just a story, and it's like he, the government that was in power had arrested him and imprisoned him and banned him from running for public office because apparently he had been the mayor of Istanbul and he had a lot of uh -huh. a lot of notoriety and a lot of power and was very popular and had done some good stuff and the government was freaked out about that so they they said okay you know we're putting you in prison and you can never run for office ever in your life and in the next presidential election he was elected as president by the Turkish people so wow, that's crazy, right? That's pretty so cool. Can be done. There's precedent. That, that is crazy. That is crazy. Yeah. Um, I I live in Oregon. We have early mail-in ballot here, and I think that it's been successful for Oregon. Um, um, how many, and I, how many huh? candidates were on your ballot for president? Run that by me again, please. Okay. Well, as how many candidates did you have on your ballot for president? Because Zena got um, her ballot, and there was seven. I had I had quite a few. I didn't count them all, but seven sounds about right. Plus, a right in there about. Holy cow! See, no consistency, state to state. There's only three in North Carolina. Yeah. So. Really. All kinds of issues. Yeah, we had. We definitely had at least six or seven people running for president, maybe even eight, you know. And uh, Jill Stein was in there in third place, but again, like I said, she'll get the popular vote, but she won't have the electoral vote. Yep. Well. And, uh, and I hear tell that if you, if you win the popular vote, but don't get the electoral votes, your prize is you get to be in the next presidential debate. Oh, well, gee, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what I heard, you know, so, um, but yeah, isn't that, you know, yeah, you were popular, but screw you. Yep. Lots of things that we need yeah. to work on and lots that we need to change. So I really appreciate you calling in. I'm really glad to see you back on and that you're able to see and chat and all that. It'll be good to have you back around. So Yeah, I, I don't stay away because I want to. It's usually because it's the time zone. Right. You know, I'm on Pacific time and so um so I can't always make it, but I remember tonight and here I am. Well thanks for, for watching and thanks for calling in and thanks for supporting. So take care of yourself. You're welcome. Right. And I will be back. I will stick around. Excellent. Great. Have a good evening. Okay. You too. Thank you, Shore. Bye bye. Well, that was a wonderful call from Short. It's good to hear her voice, and um, I think a good time to wrap it up because you know the morning comes early. So. Um, My one last thing I want to say about voting is this whole idea about who you vote for. And it goes back to the whole consciousness and the energy that you put into something. If you're putting the energy in for the change that you want to see, it doesn't really matter who that is that you vote for. And so all of these people, progressive people that voted for Obama, that energy is still there. People still want that same kind of change. And if he doesn't give it to us, it shifts everything to the other side which eventually is going to make the far right people completely irrelevant. So it's a it's a consciousness change, a shift in consciousness <laughs> is how I want to explain it. So right. I think that whether you vote for Jill Stein, whether you vote for Obama, if you vote against what you don't want to see happen, that's still something that matters because the energy of what you do matters.
Right. I agree. <clears throat> so thank you, everybody, for being here. Remember, no show next Wednesday night. If I can make it work, I will uh, broadcast the uh, live event that I'm doing on Thursday. Other than that, keep a uh, eye on our calendar. We got a lot of stuff uh, coming up. We are actually booked all the way through Thanksgiving. So, and we have a bunch of stuff on stack for after Thanksgiving. Uh, I appreciate everybody's support and everybody watching. Don't forget to support the new media people of your choice. Um, thank you, everybody that called in. Uh, other channels that may have been broadcasting this, thank you for your support. And clearly, great job. Thank you. Z, you're awesome. <laughs> Z produced tonight, ladies and gentlemen. So let's you hear too, it for Z. Guys. Thank you, clearly, and thanks, Mark. You guys are great. And thanks for all. Thanks to all the chatters, everybody that came in, everyone that called in. The discussion was great. I love you all. Have a good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Take care. Thank you.